combo-y version, right? With the uh, with the Muxus finish. So I, I don't know, Th this deck seems to have fallen out of favor. Uh, you know, there was a time when it was the most played deck in our historic tournaments. That has, it's been a while uh, since that's been the case, but it uh, looks like Lee still likes the, likes the build. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, all, you could almost just turn back the clock here, right? This is mm -hmm. one of the first, you know, the first iteration when Historic was introduced to the format. I mean, it, these were kind of the top decks. Now, the, the Jun deck actually did get an addition, one card, right? It does have access to the Ravenous Squirrel, so it can actually turn the qu corner a lot quicker and provide a lot of that extra pressure. But at the end of the day, it's still trying to do the same thing in terms of its overall strategy. Get Cat Oven going, get Mayhem Devil going, really, really effective at dealing with creature strategies. And Jakob actually choosing to play, again, a slightly different build here. He's playing four copies of Claim the Firstborn in his main. This is a card that a lot of people have chosen to shy away from because of how diverse the metagame is. There are simply matchups where this card doesn't do anything. But if you expect a lot of creature-based strategies, you want to pack as many Claim the Firstborns as possible to, you know, just have a better matchup against those creature decks. So Jakob has a list here of Jun Company that is really good against creatures. You know, I don't think he was expecting goblins, but this is going to be some of that splash damage. <laughs> That's right. Do, do you think that Jakob was uh, aiming this for the Celestia decks like we talked about coming in? Is Was he trying to prepare himself for those type of matchups? Absolutely. I mean, if you look, if, if you look at kind of the way that his deck um, is built, he doesn't even have anything expensive in his deck. The top end of his curve is Collected Company. Oftentimes, you see cards like Corval Faker's King as kind of the top end threat, or sometimes Bolas' Citadel, but he doesn't have that. He's trying to keep his deck as lean as possible to match up with whatever the aggressive strategies are trying to do and win that way. And you can see he's got a really nice curve out here with Ravenous Squirrel, the next turn into Gilded Goose Witch's Oven. And now he's got the Mayhem Devil down with an active Witch's Oven as well. And this is going to make life difficult here for Li Shi Tian, particularly if we get to go to another turn. Jakub, you know, generating or working off of only two lands, but doing a good job with it. What does Lee look like? He's got a pair of Skirk Prospectors, which can certainly come in handy. And boy, he's got a lot of power in that hand. Yeah, so he has the ability to make five mana, so one short of casting Muxus. And I mean, we've seen in the past, sure, you can have as much removal as possible in play, but if a Muxus resolves, it can just win the game by itself, right? Yeah, you hit five right. cards, it doesn't matter if you have a couple of triggers on the stack. So, I mean, Lee is getting very close. And keep in mind, he's also got a Phyrexian Tower in hand. With the creatures that Lee has in play, he can cash one of those goblins in for two mana instead of one. And that'll also just increase the chances that he's going to be able to resolve that Muxus next turn. Right on cue, claim the Firstborn off the top of the library here for Jakob. So he's going to be able to take out that Chieftain. Now, that is an important piece. Sure, the Muxus can just hit another one, but it, you need a Goblin that gives your other Goblins haste in order to really combo off and get the one turn kill that Lee is probably going to be looking for here. So taking out a Chieftain is a nice one. That claim was absurd. That claim was insane because now Jakob can steal this chieftain and then sacrifice it. He'll have a he'll have a, a food token that he can then sacrifice to the Gilded Goose and get basically the entire board off the battlefield. What? If he does that, Li Shi Tian now has no creatures in play to sacrifice to the tower to not cast <laughs> Muxus. So he just plague winded him for red. Yep. I mean that's the reason you play Claim the Firstborn for these creature matchups. Well, we're going to go ahead and give the advantage to Jakob here. If you look on the left, if you're if you're new to our coverage, first, welcome. We're really happy to have you. And second, we've got an advantage bar that can help you see who's ahead. Sometimes it's obvious in Magic, um, and sometimes it's not. And so this is a good shortcut for you to know kind of who's winning, who's doing well. Lee, Lee needs an Iron Crag feat. He is playing some copies of that card in the main, so that, that could give him a chance. Missed on this one. It's just going to be a land into a Cranko. Cranko, very powerful card in and of itself. But boy, he is overwhelmed here, Paul. Yeah, and now Jakob can play out a second copy of Mayhem Devil here. And that should get this Cranko also off the board. He's going to be able to deal one damage to the Cranko by sacrificing the food. And then he can then choose to sacrifice the Gilded Goose to deal another two points of damage here to the Cranko if he wants. Right, just no chill here for Jakob. He has been able to keep the board clear, but 
This is what you said coming into the round, Paul, that this is a deck that is built to play against other creature decks. And even though the Goblins deck has kind of a different wrinkle with like a combo finish with Muxus, it's still a creature deck and they have not been able to stay on the battlefield at all. Yeah, again, Iron Crag is basically the only card I would say. And it's going to be a Goblin War Chief, which is certainly not going to be enough here for Li Shi Tian. And he's going to scoop him up and head into game number two in an absolute thrashing there by Jakob. That was disgusting. His deck did exactly what he built it to do. It killed creatures on the other side of the battlefield. And he was able to get the job done easily with his, uh, with his own creatures. Yeah, and, and one thing to note about Lee's particular version of goblins, I think a lot of people have looked to play Rakdos goblins instead of mono red goblins because that gives you access to a very powerful removal effect in Munitions Expert, which is not mm -hmm. a, an option that Lee Shitian can play. He's playing the more, I guess, consistent mana base here with the mono red, but that means that in game one, he doesn't really have good answers to problematic creatures like Priest of Forgotten Gods and Mayhem Devil. Well, Lee's 2-0 and with this thing. He's got the throwback deck, and, you know, I will say that it's probably not on too many teams' radar, right? Like, it's not like you're like, all right, run it through the gauntlet. First up, goblins. It's no, no, that was two years ago. <laughs> you know, we're, we've moved on past then, so perhaps he can, you know, kind of get in there and uh, surprise some people. But here, not the case. Jakub with the easy game one win. Yeah, so, so the big issue with the goblins deck is just it's basically got nothing, right? This is a highly synergistic tribal deck, and there hasn't really been any awesome goblins to add to the deck. Um, at the same time, one of the big reasons to maybe consider playing this deck is the fact that a lot more people are shying away from the card Graph Digger's Cage. You really just don't see people playing that card anymore, which mm -hmm. was a really, really effective way to stop Muxus. But now that less people are playing that, maybe Lee believes that his deck is a little better positioned now. I like it, Paul. You found a, you found a reasonable thing to say to support somebody playing goblins in this tournament. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> Called in familiar Priest of Forgotten Gods, Mayhem Devil, and Thoughtseize in the opener to join, wow. well, in this case, four lands as he's already drawn his card for the turn. That's a heck of a hand there for Jakob. <laughs> Lee's hand. Not the best hand I've seen. <laughs> Not, not, we'll just go with not great. Um, not great. And it's going to be Cauldron Familiar hitting the battlefield. Lee's going to need to find some three, four, or six drops really quickly. All right, there's a Cranko. Yeah. I mean, the, the nice thing is he does have that Frostbite. He does have that cheap, for, uh, cheap removal effect to deal with potentially a Mayhem Devil or a Priest of Forgotten Gods. Um, but, of course... Still needs to continue to find some action here. Would be really, really nice if he can find any relevant three drop to play next turn. Curious to see if Jakob wants to go for priest or if he's if he's in a thought sees kind of mood here. It's just so tempting to go for a priest here, but given that Lee's played nothing, you have to think probably the thing that he has in his hand is a removal spell. So if you think your priest is likely just going to die, maybe it's better to just go for the thought sees. This is a much higher know. upside play, though. Right. He gets to use up all of his mana and set up a devastating Mayhem Devil turn next turn. But, yeah, that priest is uh, going to be in the graveyard here, thanks to Frostbite. Big draw step here for Lee. It, he may just play Cranko, but, but uh, he found another Frostbite. Which, you know, considering that Jakob does have the Mayhem Devil... It's not the worst. I think he'd prefer a Chieftain or, or anything like that here, but uh, he does have that extra answer. And I think Jakob, even even in that situation, thinking, well, if Lee has a removal spell, I kind of want him use. I kind of want him to use it on my priest and maybe not my Mayhem Devil. So that maybe that that was also something he considered. There's Krenko hitting the battlefield, and you know. <laughs> It's a really powerful magic card. Like if you let that thing go for a couple of turns, it will run you over and it could outpace a Mayhem Devil even. And right now, Jakob doesn't have the answer. Yeah, can't claim the Firstborn this, can't. Right. And I, I'm not even sure if Jakob has a, a, a spot removal spell to kill it. I don't see Fatal Push in his deck. No, he doesn't have even a single copy in, in all 75. And I mean, he him. has Mayhem Devil, right? Like, we right, know yeah. he can do that, but 
Oh, a goblin there would have been nice too. And, Could goblin and then activate. And, and <laughs> I mean, given what we see right now, it's possible this Kranko can just win the game by himself, right? I mean, yes. Lee has the answer here for the Woe Strider and the Mayhem Devil. And then this Kranko can get it out of hand really, really quickly. Particularly if if Lee can add one more goblin, right? Get that train right. rolling a little harder. Ooh, Witches Oven off the top. Boy, he's got a lot of the tools here now, right? We got the, the cat plus the oven. He also has Mayhem Devil. Yeah, the mana here is so awkward because Jakob wants Devil, Oven, and Thoughtseize this turn, right? Yes. He, he kind of smells a removal spell, and I think he, he he's at 20. He really just needs to make sure he gets one of these removal spells out of the way first. Yeah, the braid kind of... particularly, right? Because it's an answer for Witch's Oven. Right, yeah. He, he he might just go for the abrade here and maybe just, just get the cat oven going now and then run out the Mayhem Devil next turn where there's a good chance he can get multiple sacrifices. Okay. Frostbite in response here for Lee. He's going to limit the options huh. of Yakub with his Thoughtseize and that's going to take out the, uh, the Woe Strider. <clears throat> And that'll assume, assumedly leave just Shatter Skull smashing in hand here for Li Shi Tian. This is a close one. Yeah, I mean, if Li can just find any goblin next turn, I, I that that was a that was a little interesting though. Just deciding to run out that removal spell because no matter what, if you want to kill something with the Thoughtseize, you'll still be able to, right? With <laughs> either the Frostbite or the Abrade, you're not playing anything else. Okay, Witch's Oven, I get another a card that Li Shi Tian has to pay attention to, but ultimately Kranko should be able to overpower. It's really about that Mayhem Devil and finding some some way to get some triggers on the stack for Yaku, but if I'm looking at Li Shi Tian, I'm like, give me a goblin. Just go goblin, goblin, or just or something. Or maybe in a braid, just to get that oven off yeah. the battlefield. Ooh, oh. how about two goblins? Goblin Matron off the top of the library is probably the best case. Yeah, outside of just uh, getting a Muxus or whatever. Yeah, and, and now interesting, you know, he could choose to get Muxus, right? You get Muxus, yes. you just play Shatter Skull Smashing, and then any land off the top is good. And then if you if you don't draw a land, that means you're drawing a Goblin, which helps uh, get this Krenko, just keep, have, have that continue to go keep going. So Or he could get a one or two mana Goblin and just start could. flooding the board. He's going to go big, though. He's going to take the Muxus, play the Smashing. He figures, look, this Kranko's already going to crank out, what, three Goblins this turn. It's already going to be well on its way. That was a sweet draw step, that Goblin Matron. Yeah, and you're going to see Jakob not choose to return to Cauldron Familiar this turn. That allows him to do three damage next turn to get the Muxus off the battlefield. This way, he can go Mayhem Devil, return Familiar, sack Familiar, return Familiar, and get this Muxus off the get battlefield. The, the, the Kranko off? Excuse me, get the Kranko yeah. off the battlefield, because if he just returned it at the end of turn, uh, he would only have two damage available to him this turn. And this is great. You know, Lee is like, okay, I've got my backup plan. I need a mana source, but I, I can play Muxus if I draw one. And, you know, Jakub has to use up basically a turn worth of resources to get Kranko off the battlefield. And this is after Kranko already made three goblins this turn as well. So, you know, this is a, a situation Lee can live with, but, you know, finding a land and just binking a Muxus win would be really nice here for Lee. Yeah, I mean, land is just the absolute best possible here now for Lee. Once see what he hits. Muxus. He hit it. Okay. There's no covered mountain. Muxus time. So, we haven't seen this in a while, Marshall. No, I love kind spinning the Muxus wheel. Let's do it. And he hits and... Conspicuous Snoop and a Wily Goblin. Oh. And all of a sudden... I like Jakob's position here. <laughs> well, I mean... It's a lot of one-toughness creatures on the other side. It Yeah, it is a lot of one-toughness creatures. I'm not sure exactly how many... Okay, so Jakob can't escape the Woe Strider. That's big. Mm. So he only has access... Oh! Well, how about just, you just draw another one? He can just draw one. So that's representing uh, potentially four damage here. Uh, maybe even five if he wants to sack the Mayhem Devil. So that's killing, I mean, depending on how he wants to do it, like a Snoop plus, you know, two or three one ones. He could take out Muxus if he feels the need, though that looks pretty chump lockable here. 
Yeah, Snoop is absolutely the card that you want to get off the battlefield, as that can continue to provide Lee with the card advantage. Mm -hmm. You see that uh, the draw step for Li Shitian is going to be another Goblin Matron. So there's probably another Muxus coming in two turns. Yeah, yeah. And again, Jakob has a lot to fight through still. Oh, and is that another Matron on top? It is. Now, this is his oh, upkeep. Geez. Okay. So this is Jakob saying, well, you're going to draw that either way, and I want to know what your next draw step is, and now I can do my Mayhem double stuff to kill the Snoop so you don't get to play it. Yeah. But boy, these Matrons are doing serious work here for Li Shi Tian. He's, uh, he's going to be able to chain together Muxuses every other turn. Well, note that that was slightly risky. If, if that was a Krenko on top after the draw step... Uh, Li Shi Tian would have made eight tokens this turn or something. Wow. So, yeah, something I didn't to even be think about of. that. That, Yeah, that information was valuable, but holy smokes, that would have been a disaster. Yeah, and if he would have got to activate the the Snoop as a Krenko, I, I don't, I don't see him coming back. To that overwhelm might, that. Yeah. This is good and close right now. Yeah, I mean, that being said, I think Lee may be considering, okay, well, what can I get with the Matron? Of course, you can just get another Muxus, right? right. Um, alternatively, you can uh, you can maybe get a, a, a hasty Goblin of some sort, but given that there's a Mayhem Devil with a Woe Strider in play, it's not going to live. Right. Um, there's also the Ultra Greedy line, just knowing that you have a Goblin Matron on top, maybe waiting. But I think with Mayhem Devil, Cat Oven going, you're, you're going to really want to try to... Um, put maximum pressure here on Yaka before he stabilizes. Yeah, I would just re-spin here. Just give me another Muxus. Oh, just an extra free creature. Makes sense because okay. he can't he can't cast the Muxus this turn. That's right. So, so may as well just get another matron on the battlefield. The only downside is it's no longer in your library, but whatever. Yeah. And then get a Muxus. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Lee's not gonna be dead, right? Like Lee's not dying here he might see a good chunk of his board disappear but uh, he's going to get a chance to put that muxus on the stack assuming the Jakob doesn't find a thought sees yeah. on his turn and i imagine we're going to see some sacrifices here just to get a scry Jakob really wants to find something relevant here um another mayhem Muxy devil would be fantastic be yeah collective company would be great yeah, he's got some really high upside cards to try to find. Scry here is extremely high leverage. And he's also killing creatures when he does it, too. Right. Nope. Negative. Blood Crypt goes to the bottom. Will he just do it again here, or...? I mean, I think he's also just looking at the number of chump blockers he has, right. but I think you, you really need to. You need to find something here. As you know, Amuxus is coming down next turn. That's right. And another land is going to go to the bottom. So even though it wasn't what he wanted to find, he did clear off two lands. That could get him potentially closer to Priest of Forgotten Gods. Well, that's a fine magic card, but that isn't really the impact play that he needed here. Right. And Jakob still doesn't have enough creatures in yard to escape the Woe Strider. So we're going to see Li Shi Tian successfully cast Amuxus here. I like um, his chances. Yeah, I mean, it is a legendary creature, and Jakob does have a way to prevent one haste goblin from giving all the other creatures haste, right? Oh, okay. Uh, because he has the sacrifices available, but I mean, if Li Shi Tian can hit three goblins off of this, he's probably looking really, really good here. Yeah, and with a second haste goblin, then he would win. Okay, so he's there picking which Muxus to pick, and he oh. hits Cranko Chieftain Snoop. So he does get a window here with the Chieftain. So Jakob's going to have to kill it before combat, but Cranko does get to get activated there as it has haste. Yeah, and if you're Lee, you just don't activate Cranko uh, because there's no chance it's going to actually have haste. So you probably, if you want to get an extra token, you maybe just l let combat resolve well oh. yeah yeah so he's just going to put the pressure on right because he's going to do it anyway he knows the chieftain's going to just die so he may as well just be like hey dump you know 11 goblins out. right so, so just the thought process is because it's not going to have haste anyways you mm -hmm. get an extra token if you wait 
because that I forces see what you mean. that forces Jakob to um, that forces Jakob to uh, you know stop stop the chieftain so that the other creatures can't attack. It's yeah, a that small, makes a lot of sense. Small thing. It's a small thing, but it's true. Like the real the question then is, does Lee believe that this attack is enough to force that? And uh, maybe the answer was no. I mean, at this point, I think you might just want to send in send it in i guess the nine creatures don't have haste so you're you're all right. your one ones are going to just get three of your one ones are just going to get eaten up by the yeah. priest ghost rider and mayhem devil yeah and you're only getting in for three extra although the mux does demand a block here <laughs> <laughs> 21 21 mux this uh, the calder familiar is going to jump in front the witch's oven's already been used so it's just gonna requires tribute die. uh now, Jakob, um, you know, still has this scry available. Needs a lot. Oh! Needs a, okay, a second Mayhem Devil gets interesting. Yeah, math time for, for Jakob here. He's <laughs> going to have to put on his thinking cap because he is still going to face tremendous pressure next turn, even though things actually look good for him if he can survive. Li Shitan's drawing a mountain for the turn. Jakob knows that. Yeah, it, it's one of those, if you don't think that it's enough, you're just going to have to bottom and hope to get a company into Mayhem Devil. And it looks like he is going to take the Mayhem Devil here. Oh boy, this is going to get close, but a lot of damage can get tossed around here for for, uh, for Jakob. Okay, Mayhem Devil number two. And Li Shi Tian does not like what he sees. He knows how far ahead he is at the moment. But he also knows that these board states can get absolutely decimated by double mayhem devil. Yeah, and you absolutely need to get Krenko off the battlefield here. So it needs to do that before Lee untaps. Oh man, now, he hates that second mayhem devil. He does, but I mean and, and oh yeah, and also keep in mind Jakob's at twenty-two. So mm -hmm. uh don't think Lee will have a lethal attack next turn. Right. And this so. familiar is going to bump him a little more. Yeah, it's it's the devil's going to get to do its thing. One issue for Jakob is that he does need to commit three of these to Kranko. Like he can't let Lee untap with Kranko here. And, you know, that could have been three creatures dead instead. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're going to see a point here on Krenko, and then I don't know that he can afford to sack something else to kill the Snoop. So I think he's just gonna try to just kill one of the 1-1 one -one goblins that's in play. Okay, well, the Snoop could be could be a factor here. It's it's could be something juicy under that snow-covered mountain. Oof, if, if Jakob could fight through this, I mean. I'd be impressed. Yeah. This is a big turn. If Li Xitian can't meaningfully improve his board, he won't be able to kill Jakob this turn, and Jakob will get to untap with the double Mayhem Devil and maybe find his way through. Oh, Goblin is... War Chief is the card on top. Yeah, it's just another card. Right. But remember, I mean, Jakob really wants to just put that Cauldron Familiar in front of the Muxus. But at the same time, you don't want a War Chief off the top here. You could choose to just chump block with Woestrider, right? You can just chump mm -hmm. Muxus with the Woestrider and sack the Cauldron Familiar to kill the Wily Goblin. Excuse me, the Conspicuous Snoop. Jakob yeah, doing the math here on adding another 2-2 two -two with haste, basically, is, is, is what the Chieftain's doing at this point. But that might matter. There are 12 1-1 one -one Goblins to go along with Muxus, Wily Goblin, and that Snoop already on the battlefield. Yeah, this is so tough. I think both players feel like their uh, their game is hanging by a thread here, <laughs> right? Li Shi Tian's like, can I just hang on? Oh, and it's another Land mountain on top. underneath. And, and, and Li knows he doesn't have lethal this turn, and every single turn that passes, Jacob will slowly get ahead here with that really, that, that time-tested cauldron familiar witch's oven mayhem devil combo that's been so so powerful against these creature strategies and that has definitely withstood the 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 test of time 
1919 Mux is coming in. It really is a must block, even though Jakob's at 23, because he can't open himself up to just an all out attack that would actually end up being lethal. So he's going to throw the Woe Strider in front. Yeah, interesting. I could consider blocking with Cauldron Familiar, sacrificing yet killing the scoop and killing the snoop and scrying. Is yeah, does does putting the Woe Strider in the yard mean that he can get back the other one that's already there? Like, is that the card he needs to? Yeah, it, it, I mean that's what it looks like. Oh, oh, face. Whoa, whoa, whoa! There's another mayhem whoa, devil. Whoa. Okay. There's some business happening here. He's going upstairs. Li Shi Tian's like, what is happening right now? I he can't play it next turn though, right? I mean, unless he's willing to sacrifice this Mayhem Devil for a food and then make a familiar. But yeah, he's just going for the Woe Strider here. And yeah, we're. I mean, yeah, I think we're good. I think Jakob's gonna stabilize here and burn Li Shi Tian out with the Mayhem Devils. Wow. <laughs> Woe Strider comes back into play as a 5 4. Now he finally has something that can block a Muxus in trade. And, and, and the fact that Lee's got that mountain on top, I mean, jakob has got to be feeling great here, right? I mean, it, there's not a whole lot he can do. And you see Lee Shi Tian's life total is starting to plummet here. He's already down into single digits. He's on nine life right now. Oh no, Jakob just made a mistake. He's very frustrated with himself. You see him shaking his head. He just... Oh, did he, did he not kill the Snoop? He has not killed the Snoop? He, yeah. He has not killed the Snoop. He needs to kill the Snoop. That's the only way he loses. Oh, no. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Okay. He was shaking his head pretty yeah, hard yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like he's all but got this locked up at this point. Jeez. And Snow Covered Mountain goes into hand here for Li Shi Tian. The only thing he has left is a Skirk Prospector. 12 1 1s, but. How is Jakob at 24? Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> he just hasn't taken any damage. <laughs> Strangely enough. Yeah. Hey, what a way to stabilize here, right? I mean, Lee had over twice as many creatures at one point. He had an active Krenko for eight tokens, but just that that combination, Mayhem Devil plus Familiar. How about Mayhem Devil plus Mayhem Devil plus, plus Mayhem, Mayhem De Devil <laughs> here for Yakub, who has plenty to fire off at the dome here, and Li Shi Tian's gonna scoop him up as Yakub picks up the win there, wow.